Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Scott Hollis, and today we're going to talk about Edge Empire and Fantasy Flight's Star Wars uh, role-playing game, RPG for short. And last last time we talked about Bothans as a species. This time we're talking about droids. Typical Fringer may ridicule his droid to no end, yet without it, he is usually lost. Droids serve a variety of roles on the fringe, including security, conflict resolution, surgery, medicine, mechanical repairs, construction, astrogation, and piloting, and mechanical labor. While many of these droids have only have rudimentary intelligence, some are capable of independent thought. And that is the droids we are thinking about today. We're talking about today is the ones with independent thought. Um, <coughs> droids, as far as role playing goes, are considered the same as every other species. There are some differences, obviously, and we will go over those. Um, personality of a droid is usually very quirky in a role-playing game setting uh, because generally droids are programmed to do certain things, and the only reason that they can become player characters is because something went wrong with their programming, and that makes them quirky. If you think of something like C-3PO or R2-D2, K-2SO, um, or BB-8, they're all a little bit quirky. Something has happened to their personalities, and so then they get these little really quirky traits. As you know, the Star Wars universe is full of droids and droid types, and there's so many different variations of droids that it's hard to say that your one-player character droid can only be a certain style because um, there could be thousands of combinations, but generally speaking, there are a few models that are basically player character droids. Um, one being the 2-1-B surgical droid. The surgical droid is a highly intellectual and flexible thinker. As one would expect, this droid is uh, involved with life and death decisions, so he pretty much has to be intelligent. Um, it's ugly chassis, of course, as we've all seen, you know, the one near the Bakta tanks, but they are ridiculously intelligent. Um, protocol droids, as we know, are probably the most popular Star Wars droids other than maybe the Astromechs, because C-3PO, <clears throat> by the way, one of the only characters in every Star Wars movie ever. Um, yeah, C-3PO is definitely a protocol droid. They are perfect to be assigned to tasks such as ambassadors, political aides, translators, and personal attaches. However, you know, because of the weird quirk, sometimes other things can happen. And then you have the IG assassin droids, such as IG-88 being one of the most successful assassin droids ever created in the history of the universe. They are nasty and um, rarely mean an opponent they can't kill. Their whole focus is just kill, kill, kill. Um, next, next will be the LEVO, the law enforcement droids. Um, of course, that kind of explains what they're for is law enforcement. You also have the Loam protocol droid, which is kind of like an ugly version of the, the 3PO units. And then of course you have the R series Astro Mech droids, which are R2D2, R2D4, R4D4. Yeah, anyway, you get the point. Yes, they fit perfectly into the sockets on snub fighters um, to perform calculations for jumping to hyperspace, to piloting the ship, to whatever else these little astromech droids. But they all can be player characters, which is absolutely fun. A little lore, some of the some of the smugglers in the Star Wars universe has swore that there is droid planets only out there where like intellectual droids go to hide from the rest of the world so they don't have to be used as like little droid slaves and stuff. Instead of laboring, they go off and do their own little societal thing. Um, droids played by PCs represent a really special case. Um, over the millennia, there have been countless examples of droids who have droids who have transcended their original programming, programming, and become self-aware <clears throat> and self-operating. Some of these automations will last hundreds of years, repairing and upgrading themselves to maintain peak efficiencies. Some of these droids just take pride and satisfaction in continuing to do the jobs they were designed for, such as like the R2 is constantly working to be a better pilot, a better astro mech a better astromech 
Astro Mac, yeah. Ast and just better at all doing those things. Um, of course, R2 was just bad. He was just a bad to the bones little little droid. Uh, the infamous four loam started out life as a protocol droid, becoming before becoming a master jewel thief, and eventually one of the galaxy's well-known bounty hunters. So droids can modify and change their protocol over the year. Droids from all classes operate with smugglers and criminal groups in the outer rim, who, where there are those who are willing to overlook their mechanical nature and respect a fellow Fringer with a valuable skill set. All right, Dro there are some droid classifications that we need to be aware of in this particular uh, role-playing system. Um, class one is a first degree droid specializing in physical sciences, mathematics, and medicine. These droids are often highly intelligent individuals, but lacking any kind of common sense. Um, you have a class two that works in engineering and technical fields such as repairs and astrogation. They are often well liked due to their reasonable intelligence, non-threatening appearances and quirky personalities. Then we have a class three droid are often humanoid in appearance and intended to work directly with organics. Uh, organics being the fleshy people, right? Sometimes not even fleshy, sometimes carapace people, but you get my point. Um, they are programmed for social services, social and service areas such as interpretation, teaching, protocol, and diplomatic stuffs. Class 4, the 4th degree. Class 4s are equipped with weaponry and designed for security, military training operations, and gladi gladiator robots, and even assassination. That's kind of cool. And then, of course, to Class 5 are simple labor units for a whole load of whole host of menial jobs from sanitation to load lifting many of them do not have enough cognition cognition to uh be sentient and that means you know like the little power droids that walk around yeah right they don't or the mouse bots very simple right to the point got one mission let's do it they have the load droids also and stuff like that okay in this game droids start off with all ones in their abilities and uh, they have a wound threshold of 10, the strain threshold of 10 plus willpower, and the wound is 10 plus brawn. Starting experience points, 175. Um, the droids do not need to eat, sleep, breathe, and are unaffected by toxins or poisons. They have a cybernetic implant cap of 6 instead of their brawn rating. In addition, after selecting a career, droid player may train one rank in six of eight career skills instead of the usual four. After selecting their first specialization, a droid player may train one rank in three of the four specialization skills instead of two. So that's kind of cool. The bonus for uh, having some low stats to begin with. Inorganic. Since droids are inorganic, they do not gain the benefits of recovering the back to tank, stem back, or medicine skill checks. Droids do recover naturally by resting as their systems attempt to do self repairs. Otherwise, droids tend need to be tended with mechanic checks and using some diff same difficulties as medicine checks for organic beings. Emergency repair patches can be used to repair damages like stim packs are used on organic beings. Uh, droids cannot be force sensitive or acquire a force rating by any means. They can never use force powers and also cannot be affected by mind altering powers. Droids generally don't wear clothing and many of the equipment that organics would carry may actually be part of the droid's body. For this reason, droids are allowed to treat certain pieces of equipment differently than other characters. Example of a droid purchases and wears armor, the player can simply say he has upgraded his armor plates on his body or a reinforced outer covering like wise he could have upgraded verbal brain instead of a data pad or an internal communications device instead of a comm link. So that is the bonus of the droids. The droids basically are like, you don't have to uh, change your character or carry on bulky objects, you just change like your body parts so you want a new brain you open up the top of your head put a new brain in clunk and you're good to go right you want a new arm you just pull one arm off put a new one on it's got some new stuff you're good to go that's the advantage of droids in the star wars universe i'm playing in the edge empire 
So when you if you decide you're gonna go ahead and play one of these, you need to think, okay, I gotta be quirky. What am I gonna do to be quirky? What is my role? What do I wanna be? Do I wanna be a repair droid? Do I wanna be a medical droid? Do I wanna be a, a you know a, a robot fighting droid of doom? Do I wanna be a simple load droid? Do I need to wanna be a power droid? Do I wanna be a communications droid? There are millions and millions and thousands and thousands and hundreds and hundreds of stuffs that a droid can do. And it could be very rewarding. Um, and of course, the Star Wars universe droids are everywhere. So you can have pretty much, you can dream it up. I'm guessing as long as the DM is okay with it, you can pretty much be it. I imagine you have to work off a few base chassis, but if you can dream it up, you probably can be it as long as you're not, you know, OP'd and too too powerful is what I'm trying to say. So anyway, so that that was my review on the droid. And next next time we'll probably do a review on another class, and it will probably be something simple like uh, the Gand. Until next time, my name is Scott. You call me Guff, and may the forest be with you.